Hi, I'm Mark Barsamian. In this video, we'll discuss marginal quantities. This material is from section 2.7, Marginal Analysis, and like the last video, the, it's taken from just the beginning of the section, middle of page 162 to middle of page 164, just parts of examples 1 and 2. Uh, the relevant homework is uh, this set of three exercises from section 2.7, Computing Marginal Quantities. I've incorrectly labeled this as prerequisite skills. It's not. This is stuff that's uh, new for this course. In the previous video, we discussed uh, some business terminology. We just discussed two terms called demand and cost. In today's video, we'll work also with what's called revenue and profit and with marginal quantities. So, so to review from the previous video, the demand is the small letter x. It's a variable. It just represents the number of items made. The cost, capital C parentheses x, is a function that gives the cost of making the batch of x items. What's called the revenue, capital letter R, is the amount of money that comes in from the sale of x items that are made. Then what's called the profit, capital P, parentheses x, again, capital letter P, is a function, and it's defined this way. Profit equals revenue minus cost. That is, the profit function equals the revenue function minus the cost function. So we have these four terms, demand, which is a variable, cost, which is a function, revenue, which is a function, and profit, which is a function. To that, we add this idea of marginal quantity, which just simply means the derivative of a quantity. So marginal revenue is R prime. Marginal cost is C prime. Marginal profit is P prime. Those are all capital letters. So we'll do just one example today. In this example, we're given this cost function and we're given this revenue function. So question A says, find the marginal cost function. Well, this problem is not hard, but it does require that you know the connection. You know what these terms mean. So the solution is we have to find capital C prime, parentheses x. So we'll set this up just like we do in the other derivative problem. So here we use the sum and constant multiple rule. Notice the constant multiple, 1.1, slipped past that derivative symbol. But the constant function, 145, stays inside, has to have its derivative taken. All right, so now we'll do the derivatives in the next step. Start by writing down the things that won't change. Now this first derivative is easy. Just use the constant function rule. This derivative on the right is the derivative of, of a power function. The value of n is n equals 1 because x is the same as x to the first power. So when I write down the right side of the power rule, I write down the old exponent, which is the number 1, and then I write down the letter x, and then I write down the new exponent, which is 1 minus 1. So the answer is 1.1. 1 .1. Let's go on to part b. Part b has a typo in it. This should say marginal revenue, being asked to find the marginal revenue function. So again, this asks that you make the connection, that marginal revenue means simply the derivative of revenue. So there I just simply brought in the revenue function that we were given at the start of the problem. The revenue function is 5x minus 0.02x squared. Now we use the sum rule and constant multiple rule again. So those two constant multiples came right through the derivative symbols. And these are multiplying the derivatives. I put that 5 kind of far away. Now we do the derivatives in the next step. We start by writing down the stuff that won't change. So here on the left, we'll do 
the power rule with n equals 1. And over here on the right, we'll do the power rule with n equals 2. The 2 comes from there. So in these parentheses, we put the results of doing the power rule. That is, we put down what is the right side of the power rule. And then we simplify. So our result is that r prime parentheses x equals this quantity. There's a typo there. Let's go on to the last part. Question C says to find the marginal profit function. Well, here, part of what's being tested is whether you can make the connection of what marginal means, but also what profit means. So profit is revenue minus cost, how much money you bring in from the sale of x items minus how much it costs you to manufacture those x items. So in function notation, now we could build the profit function, but we're not really asked to find the profit function. We're asked to find the marginal profit. So that's the derivative of profit. That means that we take the derivative of the thing that's the profit function. But the thing that's the profit function is this thing, revenue minus cost. And we can, without even having that function in front of us, we can give the form of the derivative here. So just use the sum rule. And recognize that the derivative of revenue is, is marginal revenue that's uh, abbreviated as R prime, capital R prime, and the derivative of cost is abbreviated C prime parentheses x, and that's the marginal cost. Well, we got these in parts A and B of this problem. So there are results from part A and part B. We just bring them in and then we compute the difference. So our result is that the marginal profit is denoted capital P prime, and it's this quantity, 3.9 minus 0.04x. We should be careful and make sure that our capital P's really look like capital letters. I'm going to put a little foot on my capital P's. The reason is that soon we will be introduced to what will be called the price function, and it will be denoted by a small letter P. So it's going to be very important to keep our capital P's distinct from our small p's. So that's the end of our example. You see that this video, there wasn't really much new, just those new terms, revenue and profit, and the idea of marginal quantities, which just means the derivative of a quantity. So that's the end of the video. Thank you.